A while back, I was invited to Florida Supercon to judge a qualifier for the Cosplay Central Crown Championships. But I'd never been to Florida Supercon before, and I quickly learned that while the Crown Championships are awesome, the con itself is a little different to most cons that I go to. And as I rode past the front of the convention center and went down the block to a hotel above a taco place, the biggest problem with Florida Supercon reared its head for the first time. That that being, there is no attached hotel for the Miami Beach Convention Center, which will become a much bigger problem later. But for Thursday night, I had friends arriving and badges to obtain. I made it! And so did Tulin. He only got a little bit squished. The other judges are not in this hotel. They're in a different hotel, but I'm in this hotel and this particular room is above a taco restaurant. And the way you get in is you walk through the taco restaurant. So I'm gonna have to walk through the taco restaurant in my cosplays. You're welcome, taco restaurant. So that's gonna be a thing, but here's the room. It's pretty small. The size of this room would not be a problem, but because Joe could not come, I did invite Pins and Snip to come. They are bringing their cot. They have a bunk bed cot. So the cot's gonna have to go like here. So this room is about to get much smaller than it is. <laughs> but friend times, yay. With pins and snip and toe, we made our way through the lovely streets of Miami to take a short two block walk to the convention center. All right, how do we get in? <laughs> that way? Cool. Thank you. Only to discover that you can't enter the convention center from the side we were on. Convention center drive. Do we have to walk all the way around it? I figured you could walk in here because they only had one entrance open on one side for the security. Uh, but we got kind of lucky and ended up walking right inside when somebody walked out. So for at least this time, we got to walk over to the con in the air conditioning. This was the only time this happened. Every other time we went to the con, we had to walk all the way around the Miami Beach Convention Center in the hot and humid Miami weather. I guess we could have walked the other way. Yep, we're gonna go that way and look back. Yeah. This feels kind of apocalyptic. A pop, a pop, a pop. You know what it is? Apocalyptic. You know what it is? Like right here? It's a liminal space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but once we got all the way around to the other side, we grabbed our badges and made our way into the dealer's room to go see my booth because I had a booth at this con. This was my first one. Oh my God, this is cute. Isn't it? Oh yeah, I'm right, I'm right here. Oh, Dova's setup is so cute. Sarah, that reminds me of the oil pinnings you made. Oh my god, it really... <laughs> <laughs> it do be looking like that. And we found my booth nestled in between the already set up booths of my fellow judges, Avera Cosplay and Dova Designs. Two incredibly talented and incredibly professional cosplayers. I think you'll see that all the cosplayers at the con were incredibly, incredibly professional. Anyway, here's us being stupid with the empty famous people booths. A segue! You know what that means. This video is sponsored by Kitsch. So now that my hair is pink, I try not to heat style it. And Kitsch sent me a bunch of their heatless curling products. The ones I like the most are the satin heatless curling set and the pillow rollers. The satin set is really easy to use. It's just this one long tube, which I also like because it means I will not lose any rollers. All you do is wrap your damp hair around it, cure the ends with the little scrunchies it comes with, which have also become my favorite scrunchies because they're satin like the rest of the set so they don't like frizz up your hair. And then you leave them overnight and I actually leave my curlers in way longer than overnight. I'll do like 16, 20 hours. The satin set is what I have done to my hair today though. And I feel like it's really easy to sleep in. And because I leave my curlers in for so long, I really like that once it's in, it kind of just looks like you're wearing a headband. But if you want even more curls, I did really like the pillow rollers. You get six of them and they come with these little snaps on the end of them so you can secure them to your head so they don't fall out while you're sleeping. I did have one fall out during this set, but that's fine. The rest of my hair was very nice and curly. 
Kitsch is a female-owned accessory brand specializing in products that make your everyday routine feel more special. They have a ton of other products too, like these bar shampoos and conditioners, and they ship everywhere in the United States and 27 other countries, including Canada, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. So if you're interested, use the link in my description or this code to get 25% off your first order and if you use that link, that 25% off is site-wide and it's automatic. So thanks again to Kitsch for sponsoring this video. Let's go back to Florida Supercon. <laughs> it was a great segue, wasn't it? It was literally a segue. Where's running for? You're working up that appetite for the, that fried chicken. Oh, fried chicken. So after sprinting for my Segway joke, hope that was funny, we headed off to try raising canes for dinner, which I had never had before, and I really wanted to try it because everybody says it's better than Zaxby's, but my raising canes review is it is nowhere near as good as Zaxby's, but it's good. Anyway, that was Thursday. It is strawberry day. <laughs> we are taking my whole costume to the booth and Pins of Snip have brought a suitcase to bring the machine in and all of the rest of the booth stuff is in there. But we have to carry all of it, several blocks. Woo! 10 minute walk! 10 minute walk! Let's go! Yeah, it was much longer than a 10 minute walk because we ended up going around the south side, which is where the construction was, carrying an entire ball gown and a sewing machine in a suitcase in the Miami heat. It was not fun, so when we got to the con, we were super sweaty, but I set up the booth and I got into my cosplay. And like I said, this was my first time having a booth. I didn't really know how it was gonna go. The only thing I really had for sale at the booth was like some patterns. But yeah, since I didn't have much to sell, I had this idea to bring a sewing machine for the booth to try to teach people how to sew at the booth but uh, I didn't know you had to ask for power at a booth because I'd never had one before, so. But anyway, because we didn't have power, we just decided to teach people how to thread the machine instead. I had pitched this idea to Bernina and they said they would send one, so thanks so much to Bernina. They shipped a crafter down to Miami for me to use at the booth, which was so kind of them, so thank you so much, Bernina. Check out the link in the description. Beck is ready. Beck right. is here. Go! You can do it. I like how it's not timed. I like how it's not timed, but she you she's rushing. Oh my god, I can't see. Oh wait, wait, wait. Use the light. They didn't give us power. I wasn't aware that you had to ask for power. Also, here's me getting gifted some beautiful Miku art from Jolly Chi. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute! Thank, Thank you so, so much. much! This is so oh, I'm gonna cherish this forever. Thank you so much! Thank you! Yay! I got to meet you. Extremely sweet interaction. That was really sweet. Let's go record Michael Jackson. Oh my Jackson god, we've been dancing. sitting here watching Michael Jackson. He's still going. He, why do you have a second sword, Michael Jackson? They want me to go over there. These two want me to go over there and He's record that side. man. He is on his All right, okay. Side. I will walk over there and get Michael Jackson. Y'all y'all give commentary on what oh you God. think about me getting Michael Jackson. <laughs> All right, Sarah's on her way. She's on the move. She's going. And, and guess who's still going? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. He's dancing. <laughs> He's spinning. Jackson. He's got the same move sets over and over again. At first I thought it was like an actual choreographed song, but he was just doing the same, the same three Michael Jackson moves. He's working the crowd. He's working the crowd. He's doing a walk. Can't see him at all anymore. He's behind a pillar. Sarah's got it though. We see Sarah's pink hair. Wow, it's exactly what I expected. That, 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 that. He's still behind the pillar. <laughs> oh, oh, he's appearing. <laughs> He stopped. Okay. It's the end. He has stopped. That he is stopped. the end. His second song. He did it. Woo. Everybody's clapping. You know. Is there going to be a third? Who knows? Pins is back. Hi, Pins. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? Michael Jackson just did a performance. <laughs> Are you Michael Jackson now? He's doing a third. He's doing a third. He's doing a third. He is doing a third number. Oh, it's Thriller. Wait. 
No, he's just hold. Somebody handed him like a fake microphone. Like, do we think that he exclusively boosts so he can do these Michael Jackson performances? Wait, is that his booth? I don't. We know. thought that was not okay. his booth. You know, he I, was just walking and he started singing and dancing. He's no, not affiliated like, with the board I game booth. I like my booth. He didn't. Better. He didn't. Like, that's his board do, game booth. Do it, I it? Do I believe he's a random person? Yes. But is it funnier if he has an entire business so that he can put on Michael Jackson performances? Yes. So that's the reality I'm living in. Is it, is it Thriller like a 10 minute song? It's a long, long song. He handed off the microphone. He's doing the dance. I was there when someone handed him the microphone. Hi! We're enthralled by Michael Jackson. It's become pretty clear that Michael Jackson was just over there. But with lots of people having learned how to throw out a machine and speculations had on some random cosplayer, and as my giant water bottle ran empty, we called Friday done. I didn't have a coffee cup, so it's a wine glass full of coffee. Saturday was the day of the contest, so we hung out at the booth for a little bit, and Pins and Snip were in their beautiful Squishables Valentine's Day plague outfits. I love these. They also did the Christmas ones. If you don't know what the Squishable plagues are, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> they are so popular already. Anyway, after a while, it was time for Dova, Vera, and I to go get locked in a room for a bit for prejudging. I'm missing the furry meetup. I don't get to go because I have to go back here. Prejudging is a thing that happens before the stage show, and it's done in cosplay contests so that the judges have a chance to look at the costumes up close because that's the real meat and potatoes of a costume contest is looking at the actual craftsmanship of the costume. In one like this, there is a stage presence element, so we have a relatively good idea about who's gonna win before the stage show, but then we don't actually fully decide until we actually see the stage. Anyway, I was the needlework judge, so I was looking at all the sewing. Uh, usually the first thing I'll do is I'll go around to the back of the costume and flip over the hems. I do that first because it, it tells you a lot about the costume. So there's a million ways to finish a hem properly, so I'm just looking for any number of them. The bottom of Miss Taurus's hems were both bag lined and top stitched, so there were no raw edges in sight. That's kind of the big thing I'm looking for. A raw edge is basically just where you cut the fabric and then you don't do anything to it. And that's bad because that means the fabric is fraying and over time that fraying will get worse and that is not a super well-constructed costume. Another big thing I look at is uh, if techniques are done properly. So take Paladin Mabel here. They had some really beautiful mitered corners with bias tape on their Lumine cosplay. And that shows me that not only do they know how to use bias tape, but they also know how to use it properly. And they took the time to get those corners totally perfect. The other stuff I'm looking at is fit and patterning. This Alice cosplay, while it's a relatively simple design, it was entirely hand patterned and it fit her perfectly. And that tells me that this person knows how to tailor a costume to themselves, but also knows how to pattern an entire cosplay. And that is a whole skill set on its own. And you cannot see this, but all over the costume, she had done these little tiny hand stitching details to match the character. And it was just so beautifully and perfectly done and such an intricate part of what looks like a very simple cosplay, but is actually pretty complicated. This Elden Ring costume from Sunlight of Astora was mostly armor, so I didn't have too much to look at, but this is a good example of when raw edges are kind of okay. In the game, this armor set has these long red shredded fabric pieces, and on the costume, they weren't just cut at like a jagged angle. He'd actually shredded them to match the shredding in the game. So it worked really well, and while it is a raw edge, there was still work put into it to get it to look the way it should. And I just have to show you this Corella because the other big thing we're looking at is variety and complexity of technique. And this Corella design is a great one because it has this long train with all these ruffles and that she herself had hand cut all of those strips of tulle and they were beautifully ruffled onto the train. But on top of that, she also has a really well tailored jacket and jackets are not easy. There's a reason why you've never seen me make a blazer before. They're really complex and difficult and really hard to get the fit right and hers fit beautifully. But this was a relatively small qualifier as well. We only had 16 contestants to look at, but 
that's pretty understandable considering that there is no attached hotel and that all of these people had to get to the con in one way or another with their cosplay in the hot and humid Miami weather. And I don't know if you've ever worn EVA foam before, but it's foam and it doesn't breathe at all. It's like the hottest thing you can wear ever. So all of these people not only suffered to make their cosplays, but they also suffered just getting to us to show us their cosplays. But with everybody prejudged, it was decision-making time, which is always really hard. All of the cosplays were amazing, and it really does come down to tiny little details when it comes to deciding who places and who doesn't. And uh, we, I've never done this before, but for some reason we decided to put all of the papers on the floor and kind of did like a process of elimination thing, and then argued over a couple people before finally deciding on what we thought would be our winners. And with that list handed over to the staff, it was time to get ready for the stage, which I did at the booth again. I just put my Sakizo back on with no lashes. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing lashes for this part because again, no attached hotel. But once we were all ready, we got to be a little silly around the main stage for a minute. What did you pick up? What did I pick up? No, 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 turn. Stop. Turn. Stop. Stop. Pull it back. Boom. Boom. Somebody's phone? What the fuck is that? That looks like it goes to tech equipment backstage. Yep. Well, we just put it on the table and then when your handler comes back. Can you, can you video this? Oh, I'm- On the day I went away. <laughs> Ready? Here's my impression of Sarah Silver. Sarah Spaceman. Ready? A lot, a lot of movement. A lot, a lot of movement. Really, really awesome. And then four! <laughs> Ready? Movement, movement, movement. Movement, movement, movement. The peak converse really make it. They really do. <laughs> Don't jump. I was gonna jump. No do it. Stage diving. No diving. If you can sit hop. gracefully, stage hop. I need to pull the, like my tiny skirt up to get my legs out. I'm okay. She's toddling. It was do that or jump. But then it was time for all the contestants to have their moment in the sun. Cosplay Crown Championships is a walk-on only style competition, so there aren't any performances. However, each contestant basically hands over a little blurb, like describing how their cosplay was made, and the MC reads that while they're on the stage, so you can be up on the stage for quite a while. Anyway, here's all 16 wonderful contestants from the Florida Supercon qualifier of the Cosplay Central Crown Championships. Features, I think she said something like a hundred feet 
of teeny tiny little ruffles, and it's Fire Tanner as Corella from Corella. All right, well, we're at the uh, we're at the pivotal moment right now. Um, again, this person that we announced is going to be the representative of C2E2 to be in the most prestigious cosplay contest in the entire world for the Crown Championship. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of screaming, a lot of cheering for this winner. All right, we'll talk you ready? One, it's okay. two, three. It's So I've actually competed with and judged Sunlight before. He was awarded second place at DreamHack last year for this same cosplay. And normally that is not allowed. Normally you're not allowed to enter a costume that's already won a prize before, but Crown Championships does not have a rule like that. So in this case, it's fine. Anyway, I've been competing with this guy for years and he has never won a best in show before. And not to put him on the spot, but I speculate that that shaking might be sobbing behind that chain mail. Well done, friend. And yes, before you ask, I actually knew a bunch of people in this comp. That's usually how it goes because we're not a huge community, so we kind of all know each other. I've competed with this Taurus before, I've competed with Mabel before, Beck is my Discord mod, but I'm fair and honest, I would never give an award to somebody just because I knew them. And in fact, I would say if I know you, I am more critical of you because I probably know your body of work and I know what you can do. But also, that's that's why there's three judges, for fairness. Anyway, here's everybody celebrating backstage. And with the competition done, our crew headed back to the hotel for an iconic pins and snip style con dinner. Okay. This is the traditional pins and snip hotel meal. <laughs> First of all, it really is crucial. True. Crucial is the rice cooker, right? Second step is the tuna creations packets. Mm -hmm. I'm going Thai chili, and then also that makes it amazing. Complete meal. We might go to the emo rave. This this will be my emo look. Is this shirt? It's the pin snip cosplay dinner con, con dinner of champions. You really gone to a con if you didn't have rice. <laughs> Did you really go to a con if you didn't eat rice in a tuna packet? It's emo rave time. Spooky. On our way to the emo rave, we met back up with Dova and Avera. Oh, I thought you were looking at me. <laughs> anyway, we finally got over to the rave and I like I don't go to many raves, but the idea of an emo rave was like, okay, this has to be good. And guess what it was. This rave started at like 11 and ended at like 1 a.m. I think, and we stayed the entire time. I have never done that before, but they were playing like every emo hit of the 2000s and 2010s and we were all just dancing like idiots to all of these songs that we all love and just having a blast and I loved this. This was my favorite thing of the whole con. This was the best rave I've ever been to and I really wish we had emo raves in Atlanta because this was awesome. Okay, but then, so the emo rave ended, and we all were all walking back to our respective hotels, and uh, well, what's about to happen? started because pins started doing this art teacher bit that all happened right, we gotta stop at the first art piece Skip, let's skip. we have to look at all the art pieces yes where they'd walk up to these weird statues that were at the back end of the convention center and we're like what does this make you think of and they're all like really suggestive statues and so avera starts doing stuff that i can't even show you and I just, I, all I have to say is that this is Pins' fault and that I did not condone or encourage this behavior, but here's a bunch of professional cosplayers climbing on top of art. Oh my God, Tim. I 
don't. Okay, this is your fault. You did this. If he, if he fucking dies, who's gonna go to Chicago? Me. I'll go to Chicago. Oh yeah, I guess I can run her up. If Tim dies, who's gonna run cosplay repair? I'll do it. You you can do that. Tim, if you die, can I have cosplay repair? Yeah. Hey. What is on there? Oh, she fell down. It is Sunday morning and it is Tulin Day. Today is my baby boy's debut. After like two and a half months of work, public will finally get to see him. So yeah, if you saw the Tulin video, you already saw me running around being a bird, but I just wanted to play you some of the live audio from some of these clips because some of it is just golden. Me. Titanic jokes are a little already too soon again. Are they? Tulin? 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 It's not your food. It all went up. Faintest to breeze. Continue being a bird, but it's time to go home now. So Finn is it's time. It's time. I'm literally wearing shorts and a shirt under this. Serenade time. Serenade time. It's naked bird time. Naked bird time. They were literally playing closing time. Everybody's packing up. It's the end of the weekend. This has been the most wild con I have ever been to ever. But we did it. My very first booth. And also, I learned that I love being a bird. That's it for Florida Supercon. I'll see you back in Atlanta. So it's not lost on me that there are plenty of parts in the world where cons are not held in places where there's attached hotels. I know that. But like every con I go to, if you don't want to go outside, you don't have to. So I'm very spoiled in that aspect. But like, Florida Supercon is really fun. The staff that I interacted with were amazing. The emo rave was incredible. Uh, and they have a qualifier for the crown championships, which is just awesome. So I really liked the con, but I really didn't like the venue. And that said, I did learn that the construction that we walked past was them actually building an attached hotel for the Miami Beach Convention Center. So once they build that, I would absolutely come back. It is Miami in the middle of July, and it's a little too much heat for me. <laughs> and I, I grew up in Georgia. Not, not North Georgia, I grew up in South Georgia, okay? I'm used to hot, and it was too hot for me. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, you should break a needle on that like button, or comment, or send the video to a friend or your mom, because those things help support the channel. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can check out my Patreon. But if you're just liking, commenting, watching, subscribing, or sending the video to your friend or mom, but especially subscribing, then you are supporting the channel too. You really are. So thank you. Bye.
Thank you to the patrons, Kylie, Shay, Camille, Ethan, Maple Francakes, Red Rover Dose, Peste at Colera, Darian, Grassy Peppers, Tiny Wyvern, Polite Crow asking if you might kindly open the bins for a little rummage, Bee Man, Elias, Lot of Bees, Opal Orchard, Terra Bear, Ray, Sophie, Savannah, He Made Dairy Cosplay, Cookie, Honeybean, Brittany, Lena, Butter, Shelly, Lay, Corden, Nora, Lollipop, Jester, Marshy, Tutti Fruity, Kelly, Spooky Kitsune Cosplay, Luxurious Cosplay, Jennifer, Lily, Luna, Lepis Cosplay, Sherry, Hadil, No Roman, LOL, Katie, Amai Jelly, Lady Blue Cosplay, Hania, Fake Smiley, Seven, Sebastian, Amar, Simrel, Matcha Kit Kat, Walter, Stephanie, Mo, Jodai, Coconuts, Night Wolf, Bingus Owl, Laura Polaris Cosplay, Aaron, Tomaki Potato, Gabby Bear, Jesse Chu, Renee J. Corsetry, Sarah, Kiwi Kikos, Another Zip Tie, Hazel, Alec, Jenny, Lady Senshi, Ramblin Cosplay, MT Gret, Jenna, Constance, Rory, Astra Fox, Kimberly, Tam Tam the Taylor, Ray Sparks, Naneru, Legfish, Amanda, Connie, Paul, Joby, DT Cosplay, Zihibi, Cal, Sanzuffle, Flair, Claudia, Katie, Allison, Queen Platypus, Riri Rose 16, Foxy McLoxy, Taylor, Tessa Bo, Shell, Alyssa, Melissa, Akima Aki, Chibi Lease, Rainbow Lola, Gloom Shroom, Infinite Salad, Miba, Sephestra, Kelly, Hubasta, Magda, Chai, Alba, and Brent, Sleepy Ellie, Audrey, Benjamin, Basie Stitches, Sunny, Coco Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus the Tie Golf, Minor, Food Pen, Penguin, Emmy, Alyssa, Katie, Experimental Blue, Toby, Shellman, Alice, Rebecca, Slushpuff, aka Corn Copy, Avandaria, Samantha, Faybound, Adriana, again, Amber, Kim, Saigni Cosplay, Kaimatsu, Block Kitty DJ, Meredith, Taylor, Sarah, Calbones, Lunar, Gaia, Lularush Cosplay, Delos, Fluffy Hair, Marcy, So Into Music, Julian, Cam, Zen, Andrew, Pin, Snip, and Clar. Oh.